145 pounds on the trailer now. This full suspension fat tire electric bike has a mid-drive motor capable of putting out 160 newton meters of torque. That's right, this e-bike is running the Bafang M620 Ultra mid-drive motor known for its torque. Holy crap, man, 34 miles an hour. Check it out, we're gonna try out a trailer on today's ride. Skimming the spec sheet here, this appears to be a pretty interesting e-bike. Definitely not a cheap one. You can see the official listing and current price on the link below this video in the description box, but do not buy the Fission Cycles Hellbender just yet. We need to crack this thing open, take a closer look at it, take it out for a full review and see whether or not it's worth the money. And when you crack the box open, here's what it looks like. Comes with some small parts for a big bike. The standard Hellbender runs Kenda tires. 26 inches tall, 4 inches wide, knobby tread. But if that's not enough tire for you, they actually have a Hellbender Max with an even thicker tire. You can see all their bikes in the link below this video in the description box. This one is running 180 millimeter rotors. We'll be working with a through axle. Take a look at the frame. I can tell this has a little bit of weight to it. Company website has it listed as 100 pounds. This one is the matte green frame. However, they do have one other color on the official website. And dude, look at the size of the shock. This is a beefy coil shock. It is a fast A shock. Here's the adjustments for the compression right here. Rebound adjustment is right over here. We'll take a look at it in a few. And look at the thickness of this shock, dude. 800 pounds per inch. It is a four link system. Suspension. One, two, three, four. The entire frame is aluminum. Let's take a look at it. Oh my goodness. Oh, I took out the camera and everything. This video would have been over. What I was trying to show you is the battery is frame integrated and the battery actually comes shipped in a separate box. Before we take a look at that, I want to show you the motor. It is a mid-drive motor. Flip this thing around so you get a proper look at it. And right away we can see it is the Bafang M620. You can tell by the orange color. For those who don't know much about e-bikes, this motor right, is known goodness. to be a very strong mid-drive motor. Taking a peek at the other side of the suspension, we can see this has the Fast Ace Extreme BD. A 53RC shock. Here's a closer look at the rebound adjustment. Oh gosh, don't fall over. And the brakes on this thing appear to be no joke. Check it out, a four piston. Piston one, piston two, piston three, piston four. And I think our attachment is here. Thanks, man. And those four pistons will be grabbing 180 millimeter rotors on the rear as well as the front. And when you have a mid-drive motor, there is no hub motor back here. Other than the torque of a mid-drive motor, one of the benefits of that is not having the weight on the rear and having it mounted down here. It'll give you better handling characteristics. And since the motor is on the frame, it is sprung weight. It gives you better performance as compared to a hub drive motor that is unsprung weight. You know, when you got a big heavy weight inside the wheel bouncing around, mid-drive is better. Well, for these things. Other benefits of the mid-drive is you send the power through the gear so you can really maximize the benefits of the torque. Oh man, 100 pounds is probably right. Which, speaking of gears, let's take a look at it. So the mid-drive sends all of its power through the chain to the gears. And on this e-bike, we get eight gears. It's got a SRAM X4 derailleur. And let's take a peek at the front suspension. We can see it is a dual crown X-Show shock. It is an inverted suspension. Hellbender. On the right stanchion, we get a compression adjustment. Left stanchion does not have any adjustments. And before we take a look at the handlebars and throw those on, let's first take a look at the battery. Battery is, ooh, it's got some fins on it. What? 19.2 amp hour, 48 volt, 920 watt hours of energy. The charger does have a fan. It is a three amp charger, so 20 amp hours divided by three amps would take about seven hours to charge from completely empty to completely full. Let's take a look at these handlebars. Ergonomic hand grips held in place by a bolt so they won't rotate on you. We have a SRAM X4 shifter, eight speeds on that shifter. Handlebars are relatively flat, have a little bit of rise to them. Hydraulic brake levers on both sides, obviously. Left side has a thumb throttle. Here's the controls for operating everything. And the display, it is a Bafang display, will power up here soon. Here's the keys for the battery. Front wheel bolts on with a through axle, has these extra secure points. Actually mounts very similar to an electric motorcycle. Front wheel goes on exactly like that thing over there. Man, this bike has been in this box like hell. <laughs> so no quick release on the Hellbender, but that thing is on there very, very securely. And in case you didn't notice, we have the same four piston hydraulic brakes up front. Here's a quick look at the seat we'll be rolling on. Kind of like a medium width, got a little bit of shape to it and a quick release lever for easy adjustments. 
And if I forgot to mention it, the M620 by Bafang is a torque sensor motor. So that means when we put the pedals on, these crank arms will actually sense how hard we press on the pedals and give us power in proportion to how hard we're pedaling, which I'm guessing in a small part spin, we shall find a set of pedals and tools. The pedals we will be putting power down through are Welgo. They are metal. They have a little bit of cleats on them. Of course, if you don't want to use those pedals, you can always override that and just use the throttle. So I think it's about time we pop that battery on there. And before we power up the Bafang display, I would like to point out there is a USB port down there in case you want to charge your cell phone. So let's pull the film off this thing, go ahead and fire it up, see what it looks like. Bafang Ultra Drive System. Powerful high speed. We'll see about that. So we do get a readout here in terms of a percentage on the top right, 90% charge, and we get our modes and our miles per hour front and center. We can go ahead and tab the I button here and tab through. We can see we have max speed. Looks like somebody tested this thing out to 61.6 MPH. We'll see about that. Average speed seven. Range, so they give you an estimated range of 71 miles with a 90% charge. We'll see about that. This is on eco mode and the amount of calories burn, time, trip, odometer, and that's that. So of course you get the different modes here. You can adjust uh, zero is the lowest and you get one, two, three, four, five. Looks like it's on eco mode. How do we get into maybe out of eco mode? I'm not sure if you can or can't, we'll find out. So there is a headlight button. This bike did not come with a headlight or tail light or any sort of that stuff, but we do have this box over here. I think there might be a rack in there. We'll check that out in just a moment, but first let's hop on this thing. So to give you an idea, the size of the hellbender. I am six foot five. Seat is on minimum height. Popping up on the suspension. Feels like nice suspension. Yeah, we should be riding nice on this thing. So on minimum height, here's what I look like on this bike and what my pedal stroke would look like. Handlebars are set in place. Popping the seat onto maximum height. Here's what I look like getting on. Suspension's feeling nice. And here's what my pedal stroke would look like with an inseam of 34 and my approximate riding position. Definitely a mountain bike style feel. Flat handlebars putting my weight a little bit up on my front arms. Helps to get you using that front suspension on the dual crown fork in, in unison with the rear suspension. Seems like it's gonna make for a pretty plush ride. We'll try it out soon. Let's get this thing on there. Actually, real quick here, I wanna show you the mid-drive system. So on pedal assist one, I'm gonna bump the throttle. And you can see, oh man, I can feel the torque on that motor. You, oh, oh, you can see that the power is sent through the chain. So when I hit the throttle, it rotates the entire front crank. And the chain, oh wow. And then a result of using that chain, you can uh, utilize the gears. So you can uh, increase the amount of torque by changing your gears. Okay, now I'm curious how fast will it go. Wow. Dang, that is a torquey motor, dude. Holy crap, dude. Wow. So it shows us how much wattage it outputs, and then the speedometer lags a little bit there, but my goodness, that's we're rolling 42.7, and it feels like that thing's turning about 42.7. That is with no load, so we'll have to see how it performs when we get outside. So I believe this is a rack, and if you like a big rack, the Hellbender is not gonna let you down. Look at the size of this thing. And it actually attaches directly onto the frame back here, so it's not gonna wobble uh, with the uh, suspension when the suspension travels. It says it's rated for 15 kilograms. So check it out, here's the trailer. It's also got some meaty fat tires. They're also detachable wheels, 16 by four inch wheels. Whisk price of this is 300 bucks. Seems pretty self-explanatory. And underneath all this nice vinyl, uh, we can see this thing is built very super solid. Then we get this mechanism. So the whole thing just attaches right on connects onto your rack with these four bolts. And it looks like there's some sort of quick release mechanism. So max weight of this trailer is, I'm not sure, but here's what 10 pounds looks like on it. Oh, you just wanna eat the tires, of course. All right, dude, let's take the Fission Hellbender out for a ride. Gotta say, I'm a fan of the color. A little bit of matchy matchy there. That is darn close. And of course, we're gonna fire up the Strava so we can track our official range on this 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery pack. Firing it up, interestingly, it shows 96%, but if we switch it on over to voltage, 
Double tap I, display info, switch that on over to voltage. It is showing 54.4 volts. That's pretty much 100. We're gonna start out on just the bike, but we'll throw on the trailer and try some stuff out with that as well. But first, we gotta get a weigh-in on this thing. I weigh, it says 204.6. Let's see if I can pick this bike up. They say it weighs 100 pounds. Driving it by the rear rack, actually. 302.2. So what is that? Just about 100, right? 98 pounds? And right away, I can tell the front of this bike is a little bit heavier. It's got that heavy, thick, durable dual crown fork and with the mid-drive motor mounted a little bit more towards the front as compared to a hub drive. And this beefy front shock. Feel a little bit extra weight in this thing. So of course, the very first test we're gonna do is run this thing up the 20% grade. These mid-drive motors are really known for their torque. We have it on the big granny gear on the back, gear number one. And for the very first run up this hill, we're gonna put it in sport mode by holding the plus button. Flips it from eco on to the sport and we'll bump it on up to pedal assist five. And this should be the full potential of the motor. So let's go ahead and just kind of mash on that throttle here and see how it does crushing it so speedometer lags a bit but man is that a torquey motor this might be one of the torquiest bikes i've ever rode holy smokes let's try another one of my favorite tests here just kind of stop on the 20 percent grade which is a very steep grade a lot of bikes can't even make it up this thing but let's start in the middle from a dead stop and just uh Thumb throttle, ready, go. So, oh yeah, dude, it is peaking out over 1500 watts, just pulling us straight up. And we'll be on our way. So what we're gonna do here is load this thing up with some weights. So that's 100 pounds. Oh my goodness. Let's see how it feels. Decently stable. So 50 pounds, let's pop on this thing. Should have no, no trouble at all. I'm really not even giving it full power. Yeah, just, yeah, that's full throttle. So pulling us up five miles an hour. Let's see how the brakes work with 50 pounds on the trailer coming down the hill. I feel there's a little bit of weight on there. Please don't rub my camera over. So now it'll be 100 pounds total on the trailer. Getting my workout in today, boys. Not full throttle. Full throttle. Can I do 100 pounds? Uh, not pedaling at all, just pulling us up. Right at about five miles an hour with 100 pounds on the back of the trailer. So, oh. So let's go ahead and throw 45 more pounds on there, totaling uh, 145 pounds on the trailer now. Hopefully these weights don't push out into the tires and act as brakes. And give it a little bit of juice here, see how it goes. 145, I can feel it's taking a toll on it, but we're doing four miles an hour. Still pulling from a dead stop four miles an hour up the 20% grade. Now we're going to add the second 45 pound weight on there, totaling up to 190 pounds on this trailer now. My goodness. Let's give it a little bit of juice here. Full throttle. Oh, have we met our match? No. Four miles an hour still throttle, only not pedaling this thing at, oh my goodness, I hit the brake off sensor. Oh, I got us stuck now. Let's let off. Full throttle. <laughs> from a stop. Losing control though a little bit, man. That's a lot of weight. You can feel, you can feel the weight back there. 190 pounds on the rear uh, from a stop, 20% grade. Let's do it, full throttle. Whew. Pulling us on up, man. Four miles an hour, five miles an hour. And it really doesn't even feel like it's dying out. It's just showing 1500 watts power. I almost feel like I should have grabbed some more weights. I don't know, man. I think that that just kind of speaks for itself on the torque of this mid-drive motor though. So I guess the real question is, how is this thing gonna ride with 190 pounds on the rack? Yeah, man, it's cruising along just fine. Since that axle is kind of mounted in the center of the trailer, um, the weight's balanced back there, so. It feels totally uh, stable, but you know, you can feel we got a little bit of weight on the back of this thing. No doubt about it. Not too shabby. One thing about this is when you're backing it up, you gotta, you gotta be a professional semi driver, man, not to jackknife that thing. Wow. Yeah, this thing, if you're looking for a bike with torque, this Buffing Ultra, my goodness. Whew. Awesome feeling bike right out of the gate, man. I'm excited for today's ride. Let's throw these things on. Can you guys see the screen through my polarized shape? Oh man, it filters it out almost completely. So I haven't even tried pedaling this thing yet. Let's go ahead and switch it from sport mode back on over to eco mode by holding that plus button and cranking on down to, oh, let's just try zero to start. So it gives you 
uh, you know, no power at all. If your battery runs out on this thing, this is a heavy bike to be pedaling with no motor. Throttle does nothing on zero either, obviously. So put it on one. Now this is a torque sensor. So the harder you press on the pedals, the more power it's gonna give you in proportion to how, how hard you're pedaling. The mid drive motors tend to be a little bit better than hub drives in terms of responsiveness on that torque sensor in my experience. And this is feeling like a very, very nice feeling torque sensor on this e-bike, as it should. This is not a cheap electric bicycle, boys and girls. So it's getting, you know, it takes us up to about six miles an hour where it cuts us off. Let's try pedal assist too. So that'll give us just a little bit more power here. And oh yeah, that torque sensor is feeling nice. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this SRAM from gear one onto gear two here. Let's cut through here, feel the suspension just a bit. Man, is this suspension feeling nice and plush. This thing's got a little bit of weight to it, man. This thing feels more like a motorcycle than a bicycle almost. But we do have those pedals on there and the torque sensor really brings back that bicycle feeling. Let's go ahead and try pedal assist three now using the torque sensor, not using the throttle at all. And you know, it just kind of bumps up your power a little bit more. Let's try pedal assist four on eco mode. Bumps up that power just a bit more. Shifters are snappy, smooth. And pedal assist five on eco mode. We are on gear. I'm not sure, about four. Oh man, this is a great feeling electric bicycle. So let's go ahead and bump that on down to, I don't know, let's try two. And now not pedaling, let's try the throttle on uh, mode two, eco mode. How much power does it give us? So that'll peak it out, 1500 watts on eco mode, indicated by a green backlit display. And will this cut power when I shift gears? Let's see about that. So I'm gonna put it on four, full throttle eco mode, and then shift a the gear. Oh no, it doesn't cut power. So did you hear the chain pop? Oh yeah, you gotta be careful. Let off the throttle, let off the power. Cut back on your pedaling a little bit when changing gears. You don't wanna snap your chain. Got a little bit head on traffic. We'll get on uh, the bike lane here, ride with the big boy cars. Probably would be a good time to throw it into sport mode. Let's see if that gives us a little more power more easily here. Oh yeah, it does. I can tell it cranks it up, man. Oh my goodness. I'm really curious to see what kind of high speeds we're gonna hit on this thing. So we'll do a little bit more off-roading here a bit later today, but let's go ahead and just kind of feel it out going over this. Haven't really played it suspension too much uh feels pretty decent going over this fast ace shock on the rear man that's a very plush feeling rear shock Let's see what kind of speeds we hit we'll get out the gps and verify top speed here just doing throttle only is showing 25 in a strong headwind today 28 in a strong at 29 oh yeah dude we'll try it with a tailwind here in a minute first impressions of this thing man this is a nice feel bike and the internal gears on this Buffang Ultra, I believe they are uh, steel or some sort of metal. So you can kind of hear a bit of a whine to the motor. The gears are like stronger than a typical nylon gear, which is something you're going to want on a heavy electric bike with a lot of power. So let's go ahead and do a zero to 20 acceleration run on this. I have it on gear two and what gear you have it in on a mid drive bike will make a significant difference on how the bike accelerates. Gear one might not have enough to even get up to 20. Let's give it a try on gear number two. Ready, go. So strong acceleration off the line. Speedometer on board lags 11, 13, GPS lags as well, 16, 17, 18, and we're kind of running out of gear. Very, very, very torquey feeling bike. So what I'm gonna do here is actually bump it on up just a gear two. So this will slow our acceleration down, but give us more top speed. So from a stop on gear four, ready, go. And you can feel it doesn't have quite as much pickup. You know, it's kind of, you know, starting off at gear four, but 12, Oh yeah, now we're feeling the power more now. 15, 19, 20. So yeah, it's a fast bike. And obviously I could start on like gear one and shift through the gears as I win. Uh, I don't want to tear, tear up the gears. So let's go ahead and give this thing a top speed run from a stop. Uh, gear number eight, full throttle. This is not the way to, you know, get the best use out of your battery or accelerate the best from a stop, but we're going to go ahead and do it. 14 miles an hour, 16 miles an hour. Now, if you're looking for a bike for high speed purposes, this is probably not going to be your number one pick for the price point, but I think it's going to get up and go here a little bit. Let's give it a try. Full throttle is still giving 1,500 watts of power picking up since we started in the top gear of eight the acceleration was relatively slow uh, but we are picking up speed here we're gonna pass the mini cooper get over here in the fast lane showing 31 on my gps 32 on my gps 29 on the onboard so onboard is reading a little bit slow but uh we're passing the astro van at 33 we'll go ahead and uh blaze the path here i saw 34 holy crap man 34 miles an hour 34 and 31 on board 34 in the gps and still pulling 1500 watts that's quite the pothole i just hit holy crap so we're about to pass by some road cyclists here just absolutely smoking them at 33 34 miles an hour topping out 
still pulling 1500 watts, man. This motor pulls hard. Holy crap, dude. That was a little faster than I was expecting, honestly. <laughs> and I did want to take a moment to address that popping you may have heard. Uh, this bike did not ship at the derailleur guard. It does appear that the der derailleur uh, might have got bumped over a little bit out of alignment in shipping just a, just a little bit. I could easily fix that just by rotating this hanger right here, but it would be nice if they had a derailleur guard shipped on there out of the box. It's totally fine. So with the high speed run being over, let's head on to the beach. All right, dudes, let's go try this thing out on the beach just a bit. And before we get down that way, there is one particular thing that I've been wanting to try on an e-bike. I want to try and climb that hill. No other e-bike has been able to do it. This one might actually be able to. So I'm going to put this thing down into gear one, sport mode, pedal assist five, and just get rolling on out here. A lot of electric bikes can barely hardly even like drive on the sand. This is gonna be absolutely no challenge for this bike. Get a little, oh my goodness, this thing dominates. Holy crap. Okay, all right, not quite though. Man, oh, ow, you gotta be careful about that rack back there though. Get a little bit of burnout action in though. <laughs> sand is just too loose, honestly. Uh, that's that's a real problem here. We'll get we'll get back out on the normal circuit here. I don't think any e-bike is really honestly able to do this, but holy crap, dude! <laughs> oh my goodness, dude! This thing is ridiculous. <laughs> like I was saying, you know, if you're looking to tow something or go through some extreme terrain, this bike is absolutely killer for that. Holy smokes, dude! This thing dominates, and you can hear the metal windings or the metal gears. Oh man, we better not go flying off this thing. <laughs> and these four inch wide tires are so grippy, like in terms of like side to side, like I know they make the Hellbender Max that has, <laughs> this thing just sounds like a beast. The Hellbender Max has 4.8 inch wide tires that are even wider than this. And it's showing a thousand watts of power right now. I'm actually gonna try shifting into gear two. We're going 12 miles an hour. Shift gears and let's try gear two now, see if we can get it spinning up. <laughs> I think we're doing a little better on gear one. Yeah, it's showing 1500 watts of power now, but we are hitting 13 miles an hour now. Oh my goodness. And this is out here in the loose sand. This has got to be like the torquiest motor on an electric bicycle that I've ever tried, I think. That's going to hit 15, I'm pretty sure. And we are just taking a beating on that battery right now. If we come bursting into this thing at 15 miles an hour, I'm gonna downshift, 15 miles an hour. Let's see if we can do it. 12 miles an hour, 12 miles an hour. Oh, almost. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> this thing is a blast. Well, now that I got sand all up in the drivetrain, let's continue on with this ride. Oh man, I can hear it. Let's try it. How well do these tires hold up? Oh yeah, dude. So let's go ahead and ride it up this part, this hill here that I do with most of my bike reviews. Oh yeah, dude, no problem at all. Just gear one sport mode. And let's try out the suspension here. I think I have everything on the softest setting. This suspension is pretty darn good. That front fork, it's got some weight to it. It's beefy, designed to, you know, haul some weight. It's a very good feeling suspension. So a lot of times when I'm doing a review, uh, I just like to see how bike rides down the stairs. This one might actually be able to ride up the stairs. Let's try it. Oh yeah, dude, that is 160 meters of torque right there. But we do have the full suspension as well, so we can just crank it right on around here. Right on down the stairs, man, monster truck style. I'll try that from a slower speed, actually. Just get down here. Get ready, a little roll out. Yeah, boom. Oh my goodness. I'll pop my front wheel off the ground there. Pop the wheelie. One more go here. It's a balance thing. Here we go. Oh yeah, there we go. Holy crap. Oh yeah, dude. You want ultra torque? Get the buffet. Ultra. I'm always kind of wondering, how the heck does this like surfing on a skateboard sailing thing work? Interesting. Just when I thought this bike was big, look at that thing. <laughs> so we're about 8.6 miles into this ride, showing 59% on the battery. Let's try a few hills. We'll do the California incline in just a moment. First, I want to try this really difficult hill over here. Only a few e-bikes I've ever had that were able to do this thing. <laughs> it's really steep. Man. Look at this from the top, dude. 0.5 lens, but man, that's a... Uh... I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this, man. All right, let's give it a go. Get a bit of a run out here. Suspension will play a big factor in this full throttle. Oh no, we're running out of power just a bit, man. Oh gosh. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be able to do it. Oh, 
battery is 57 percent well let's go try the california incline curb hopping oh yeah man great suspension so let's go ahead and give it a rip up to the top of that cliff it's called the california incline it's 85 feet tall we're not gonna run it straight up the cliff though we're gonna take the 12 percent grade really no question we're gonna be able to do it we're just gonna run it through the same test that we normally do because we're sitting at 54 percent battery and we're on gear one i'm gonna do throttle only riding up this thing oh my goodness gear just popped there a little bit sorry about that drivetrain yeah man this thing is just crushing i can't even really stay on the throttle all the way oh yeah and and when we come down the California incline, we'll slam on the rakes right before this wall. See how well they work, but let's do full throttle here on the base of the California incline. Five miles an hour, 1200, eh, 1000 watts, right around 1000 watts of power. I think I might need to shift up a gear. Let me try. Let's let off here, shift up a gear. 12 miles an hour. Oh, now it's got 1500 watts. Up to 15 miles an hour. Shift one more gear and full power again. Now it's got 1500 watts and we're really starting to pick up speed here. 16, 17, and 18. Peaking out right around 18 miles an hour at the top of the California incline. And this bike does have a decent amount of weight, but those four piston brakes, let's give it a try. So popping on down the California incline, we'll shift into gear number eight. Let's give it full throttle. Woo. So right around 100 pounds of weight four piston hydraulic brakes 180 millimeter rotors hydraulic levers Ooh. let's see how they feel is it gonna stop us oh yeah dude oh really great feel of brakes man like i was saying before the levers they're a little bit pointy in my fingers you know if i have to really get on them it's not really a big downside they're just not really my favorite levers to the feel in terms of the braking power though i mean Oh yeah, they work good. So let's say you get yourself in a situation you need to stop quickly for about 20. See what that looks like. Oh yeah, they work pretty darn good. You definitely feel there's a little bit of weight to this thing, but the four piston hydraulic brakes definitely makes up for that. Oh, started off a little bit of tire there. So final thoughts on the Hellbender. I mean, for one, you know, the price tag on this thing, $4,000, but you know, it does have some awesome performance to back it up. This thing is the monster truck of electric bikes. The Bafang Ultra mid-drive motor. Man, this thing's got tons of torque. And I've been seeing this thing output about 1,500 watts consistently all day long. So, I mean, if you're looking for something that's exceptionally torquey for uh, pulling a heavy load, maybe hill climbing, maybe riding in the sand, uh, maybe a hunting electric bike, this is an excellent option. So if you do decide this is the electric bike for you, if you click on the link in the description box, you'll get the best price down there in the description box. It'll also help support my reviews if you did buy through that link and I greatly appreciate your support. All around, awesome electric bike, heavy electric bike, powerful electric bike. Been having an absolute blast on this one. We're at 21% battery. Let's head on home, see what the final numbers are. So like I was saying all day long, I've been seeing this motor pull anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 watts. And when you're pulling that much power for that long, you're gonna start to go through a battery, especially if you're not pedaling and relying on the throttle like I've been doing all day today. So just rolling back into the neighborhood here, 18 and a half miles an hour in 40 minutes of torturing this battery and bike today. And we are showing 6% remaining on the battery. Let's kind of flip this thing off and back on, see if that might kind of reset the battery there a little bit. Nope, 9%. Let's change that from percent view on over to voltage. Yeah, 46.4 volts. So, I mean, if you're running a 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery pack as hard as I was, I mean, that's just the reality of it. You got a 100 pound bike, 200 pound dude, smashing the thumb throttle going through the sand. It's got big power, so you can drain big battery. All around, pretty awesome electric bike. If you guys do want to grab one, buy it through the link below in the description box below this video. That'll give you the best price and also help support my reviews here on Tail Happy TV. And I greatly appreciate your support. However, if this is not the kind of electric bicycle you're looking for, watch this video next. Catch you over there.